In this example, we have another closed loop control system. Here is our controller KS plus two, and here is the plant to be controlled. We are looking for the values of K that will make the system have complex roots. In other words, we are looking for the range of K that makes the system underdamped. To do that, we're going to employ the principles of root locus analysis and see what are the ranges of K that will make the roots lie on the real axis or become complex conjugate numbers. First, let's start by deriving the characteristic equation of this closed loop system and see if that falls in the standard form that we need for root locus. The characteristic equation for this system is simple, is simply one plus K times S plus two, S plus three divided by S times S plus one equals to zero. And because this is a unit feedback loop, we have the characteristic equation in the standard form that we need for root locus analysis. From the characteristic equation, we can see that we have two poles and two zeros. So there are no asymptotes, n minus m equals to zero. And all poles, we have a zero to go to. The poles and zeros are all real numbers, poles negative one, zero, and zeros at negative two and negative three. So because they're all real numbers, there is no need to calculate the departure or arrival angle. And you can start by drawing the root locus at this point. Now we can locate the poles and zeros on the S-plane. Starting with the poles, we have a pole at zero. We have a pole at negative one. And we have a zero at negative two. And another zero at negative three. Where is the root locus? Always to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros. That is, between these two poles and between these two zeros. This is again explained in lecture 11. So the root locus exists here, which means that these two poles will have to come together. And the root locus also exists between these two zeros. And there is nothing between the pole at minus one and the zero at negative two. Because you have two poles and two zeros, these poles will have to come to the zeros, but they cannot cross into this area because there is no root locus there. So the only option is for these poles to come together. One goes up, the other one goes down. One goes to one of the zeros, and the other one goes to the other zero. And this is the root locus for this system. We are interested in the values of k that will make the system underdamped. That is, the values of k that will have the root locus or the poles within this part, this region of the root locus. They are complex numbers, and that's that's what characterizes a underdamped system. So to do that, we need the values of k at these two points. And to calculate the value of k at these two points, we need now to find what these two points are. That's the breakaway point, and that's the break-in point. And then, once you know those, we can evaluate the value of k at that point. So let's now find the breakaway and break-in point. To find the breakaway point, we can now set k to p of s, and isolate for p of s in the resulting function. If you do that, p of s is negative 1 times s times s plus 1, divided by s plus 2 times s plus 3. Again, by simply rearranging, solving for k here and replacing k with p of s. Now, to find the breakaway and breaking points, you need to take the derivative of p of s with respect to s and set that to 0. So here we have a fraction, two functions. Let's call the top here f of s, and let's call the denominator g of s. We know now that the derivative of these functions is given by f, the derivative of s times g of s, minus the, deriv the derivative of g of s times f of s, divided by g of s squared. If f of s is s squared plus s, its derivative here is 2s plus 1 times g of s. g of s is the multiplication of these two functions. 
s squared plus 5s plus 6. Minus the derivative of g of s, so the derivative of this, which is 2s plus 5 times f of s, s squared plus s, all divided by g squared, which is s plus 2, s plus 3. And this is equal to 0 with a negative sign here. Now you multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1, this negative sign disappears. And when you multiply 0 by the denominator here, this denominator also disappears. So we are left with the top of the equation to solve for. So expanding the first term, we have 2s to the power of 3 plus 10s squared plus 12s plus s squared plus 5s plus 6 and minus 2s to the power of 3 minus 2s squared plus 5s squared plus 5s equals to 0. This 2s squared and this 2s squared will cancel out. Here we have 11s squared minus 2s squared. This should have been negative here. Negative 5s and negative 5s squared. So here we have 11s squared minus 7s squared. That is 4s squared. Here we have 12, 17. Actually, this 5s cancels with that 5s. And we are left with 12s squared, 12s plus 6 equals to 0. Now, solving for this, we get the roots, and they are negative 2.366 and negative 0 0.63. Okay. Now, are these breakaway or breaking points? First, are they real numbers? Yes, they are real numbers, so they might be breakaway or breaking points. Second, do they belong to the root locus? The answer is yes. S equals to negative 0 0.63 is somewhere between negative 1 and 0, so this is definitely the breakaway point. This is negative 0 0.63. This is the breakaway point. This is the value of S, where the system is critically damped, and the poles are the same. Is negative 2.366 part of the root locus? Yes, it is right there. And it's between these two poles. This is negative 2.366. This is the break-in point. This is the value of S when the poles come together here, and the system is again critically damped. What is the value of k at those locations? Well, to find the value of k at those locations, we have an expression for k here. We know that a k is p of s, and p of s is this entire function. So if we now evaluate p of s at these two points, this gives us the value of p of s, which happens to be k. So if we now do p of s, so p of negative 0 0.63, this is equal to the value of k, and this is 0 0.078. If you now do p of s at the breaking point, that is negative 2.366, this is also the value of k, but now the value of k when the poles are here, and this is equal to approximately 14. Once again, knowing the breakaway and the breaking points, we know the value of s at these two points. Replace s in this expression here, so for p at that specific point, and this, as we defined here, is the value of k. What can we conclude now? When k is greater than 0 and is smaller than 0. Point 078. The poles are here. The system is 
overdamped. When k equals to 0 0.078, now the poles are right there at the breakaway point. The system is critically damped. When now k is greater than 0 0.078, but is smaller than 14, the poles are located within this region of the root locus, and the system is underdamped. When k equals to 14 exactly, we are back now to the same case of, of a critically damped system, because we are now here, the two poles are the same. So this is a critically damped system as well. Same as that. And when k is now greater than 14, now, now the poles are again real numbers and the system is overdamped once again.